Hello Retro Gamers, how you doing? Um, I'm just gonna quickly sort of just slide into shot here because I'm too lazy to set up the camera twice But I have a special video for you today. We have a package uh, I haven't actually opened the package yet even though it looks like it may have split open in transit So hopefully it's not actually broken or anything, but you may be wondering well, Brendan, what's in this package? Why, why are you showing me this? Well, long-time viewers may remember that six years ago, and yes, isn't that crazy? Six years ago, I bought this broken NES and repaired it in a very early repair video for this channel. While my skills were far less developed than they are these days, I still managed to get it working through cleaning and by disabling the lockout chip. Fast forward to the modern day where I'm no longer living in my parents' house and we can see that this console still has the packing tape residue on it. I guess I never properly cleaned that off for whatever reason. Even though I did fix it in that original video from 2016, this actually did stop reading games a few years ago. But to be honest, I'm not the biggest NES gamer ever, so it got pushed to the back of a very long list of things that I want to make videos about on this channel. But then I was in a local retro gaming store recently and I found this. It's called the Maxi 15 Pack and it's just a selection of unlicensed games for the NES. So this renewed my interest in getting the console working since I really want to play this. It's right up my alley. Since I'm unsure if that actually works though, I will be using these two games for testing. These at least worked a few years ago when I last used the NES, but I've given them a thorough cleaning anyway for testing purposes. And as we can see, we get the white or grey screen of death. No matter how much I insert or reinsert the cartridge, wiggle it around, whatever. Even blowing into it doesn't work. I can't get any game to play. Well, I can't get any of these two games to play anyway. So let's pull this thing apart and see if we can fix it. Disassembly is very simple. You just need to turn it upside down and there are six Phillip head screws to remove. Once those are out, flip it back over and the top half of the case should come right off. There actually should be a metal shield here, but I guess I removed that last time and just never reinstalled it. Start by removing a few more screws that hold in the cartridge loader. From here, you can just sort of wrangle it out of position. This is a bit easier if it's in the open position. And from here, there is a bunch more screws to remove. Thankfully, all these screws are exactly the same, except for two that were removed from the cartridge loader. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. It's at this point you should be removing some cable connectors. But here I'm removing the 72 pin connector. It will be on quite tightly, but there's nothing screwing it into position. It should slide straight off the motherboard's connector. And here I am removing those three cable harnesses. There's one for power and two for the controller ports. It's easier if you do this before you try to remove the 72 pin connector. May as well attempt the simple solution first and foremost. The row of pins the 72 pin connector slides onto are capable of getting dirty, like any pins ever, so it is worth giving this a bit of a clean as well, as it can be a failure point. I'm using 99.8% isopropyl alcohol for cleaning, just in case you're wondering. I also sprayed some of this IPA into the 72 pin connector, and then slid it on and off for a more closer clean. At this point I decided to give it a test. No need to fully disassemble the whole console. You can simply slide the 72 pin connector back on and then plug the cartridge into that. Just make sure that it's facing upwards. Otherwise, the only other things you need to plug in are those three cable harnesses. And we get no love. But while we're on that same fort train, I tried a very similar process with the cartridge. I just sprayed a bunch of IPA into that and then insert it in and out of the cartridge slot as well, cleaning it in the same manner. At first I was just getting that blank screen, but when I pulled the cartridge out just a little bit, it worked. Oh. But reinserting the cartridge, we again get the grey screen. So this shows that it is the pin connector that is the issue, which is what I thought, and not another issue somewhere else in the console. I think this repair needs some boiling hot water. Yep, you heard the man. For the first time in what I believe is Retro Game On's history, we're heading to the kitchen. So this is a process I've seen many times on the internet over the years, but have just never tried it myself. The theory is you can plop the pin connector into a boiling pot of water 
And not only will that give the pins a deep clean, but it'll also loosen them up and hopefully set them back into what is similar to their factory position. Another thing you can do is manually bend the pins and I can just see that ending in disaster. So I'm gonna give this process a go. I decided to use distilled water for this. So if I was just using tap water, who knows what other crap's in it. Obviously nothing that would harm you when you're drinking it because we have very good water here in Australia. Just wanna point that out. But it may or may not be okay for a NES's pin connector. I should point out that I do not take any responsibility for any melted cart connectors if you follow along with what I'm doing here. But I can say from experience that mine didn't melt at least and supposedly the metal of the pins is a type that won't rust. So once the water is at a nice rolling boil, and that's another phrase I thought I'd never utter on a retro gaming channel, pop that cartridge in for about five minutes. I did move it around a bit with some tongs during those five minutes for, I don't really know what reason, maybe to stop it possibly sticking on the bottom of the pot, although that's probably not going to happen. Um, yeah, look, I don't know. I'm not running a cooking channel here. <laughs> After five minutes, I took it out and put it on a paper towel to let it cool down a little bit. Not completely, but just enough so you can hold it without burning your fingerprints off. I then inserted and reinserted an official cartridge about 15 times. Supposedly this helps the pins form into the shape that they need to be in. And then I plopped it back into the boiling water for about another five minutes. So after that, take it out. And I think it goes without saying that you'll need to let this dry properly. Personally, I let mine dry overnight. Obviously, you don't want any water in there as you're trying to play a game. That would be bad. And here we are the following day, same testing setup as before, and yeah, would you look at that. Worked first time, and it was properly inserted as well. I didn't have to wrangle it around like I did before. I inserted it a few more times, and it was working first time every time, which is nice. So in my experience, I guess boiling the connector works. Who would have known? From there, I put it back together in the exact reverse process as pulling it apart, and then gave it another test once everything was together and all the screws were in. And like before, it booted a game, first go. All right, let's clean off this six year old sticky tape residue once and for all. This was super straightforward. The good old combination of IPA, a toothbrush, and a paper towel made short work of it all. It was at this point I stopped filming because I thought the footage of me cleaning it would look repetitive and boring. But I really wish I had left the time lapse going for a few minutes more because once I got to the bottom of the console, I pulled the cap off to the expansion port and found this. No, don't go in there. Yeah, that thing was in there the entire time. That was the first time I had pulled off the expansion slot the entire project. And man, I really wish I had kept filming. I would love to have seen my initial reaction. My face was probably less than 10 centimeters away from the expansion port when I pulled the cap off. I probably just about jumped back into the 90s. So it was then time to bring the big guns out and <sighs> open up the NES again. The spider was most definitely pissed and had crammed itself into a very awkward corner. And you killed it just then? Yeah. Huh. It's actually like living. Look how fucking massive it is. <laughs> it was living under this. Right. So I was cleaning up the, the console because it was covered in sticky residue. And I've been working on this for two days, did not know it was there. And I pulled this off, oh, yeah. scared the living shit out of me, and it, it and it made a, an escape down into this little hole. Nah. So I didn't get on film it scaring the shit out of me, but I, I got on film it escaping down the little hole. <laughs> I thought I heard you yell. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, he lost his zapped himself or something. Yeah, well, thanks for checking on me. Sorry. Yeah, that's a bit much. Oh man, that thing is nasty. It's like the one that crawled out of the um the washing machine uh, when I picked up the sheets in the washing basket. <laughs> oh man. So suffice to say, once the spider had 
passed away, I had to pull everything apart again and give all the insides a very thorough clean with IPA since I'd sprayed more teen all over it. I can't imagine that's too good for circuit boards. But with all that drama out of the way, the Koto looked quite good at the end of the day. I'm not sure why I let that sticky residue sit there for so long. And then finally, it was time to play some unofficial NES games. Unlicensed NES games feel like a bit of a novelty to me and I find it really interesting. So keep your eyes out for a video dedicated to those coming out soon. Regardless, I wanna thank you for watching this video and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.